The Lord be with you. I invite you to turn with me in your copy of Holy Scripture to the 11th chapter of Paul's epistle, first epistle to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we'll be reading verses 17 through 26 there. Now in the following instructions, I do not commend you, because when you come together, it's not for the better, but for the worse. For to begin with, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and to some extent I believe it. Indeed, there have to be factions among you, for only so will it become clear who among you are genuine. When you come together, it's not really to eat the Lord's Supper. For when the time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead with your own supper, and one goes hungry, and another becomes drunk. What? Do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I commend you? In this matter, I do not commend you. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. May God bless the reading and hearing of Holy Scripture. Would you pray with me? And now, O God, help us, Lord, to hear what you would have us to hear, that we may do what you call us to do, so that we may be the people you call us to be. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, it's World Communion Sunday, and I have to tell you, I love communion. I mean, I'm a Baptist, but if I could be a communionist, but see, that sounds too much like communist, and you get where that's going. I love communion. I've taken it a lot of different ways in my life. A few years ago, on Ash Wednesday, I decided to go to the noon Ash Wednesday service at the local Episcopal church where my friend was the priest. She wasn't really surprised to see me there. I told her I was coming. The service was, let's say, aerobic. You'd have to get up and kneel down and get up. Well, there for a while I was kneeling until I realized the kneeler was broken. And I was, in fact, tilted just a bit. And my right leg had fallen asleep. And the time for communion came, and so I very slowly, you know, like a father trying to be in step with his bride down the aisle, walking to get there. And then you had to kneel again. My friend, she came over. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. It wasn't Baptist blood, if you know what I mean. And I dipped the bread into the wine, took it, and as I got up, I stumbled a bit down the stairs, and I heard someone behind me say, boy, those Baptists can't hold their wine. (laughs) And back to the scene I went and sat back in the pew. Then there was the time, one spring break in college, we were all working in the inner city at the Loveman's Village housing project. A few of us had given our spring break to go there to play basketball and serve spaghetti, that sort of thing. And I remember one night as we were all sitting in the living room of this house where we were all staying, someone said, I think we should have communion together. And we all said, yeah, I think that's a good idea. And so we brought out the jug of Milo's tea and those sweet Hawaiian rolls. And someone said a word of blessing, began to break those rolls and pass them around as we all shared sweet tea from the same cup. And then there was the time when I was the pastor at Osage there in Texas. We'd had communion that morning, but one of our own, J.W. Schultz, was in the hospital I said, well, we can't leave J.W. out, so I took a few of those little Jesus, we called them, little squares of Jesus crackers. We put them in some aluminum foil, balled them up, I stuck them in my pocket, 
poured some of the grape juice back in the little bottle. It didn't take a big one, just a little one. Put the cap on, stuck it in my other pocket, went to the hospital. J.W. was lying in the bed. I said, J.W., I came to bring communion because we had it at church. And it dawned on me I didn't have one of those little cups. I didn't have a tray. So I just unrolled the aluminum foil, flattened it out a bit. And then J.W., his wife Audrey, and I all took a swig from the same grape juice bottle. And the Lord was there. All different kinds of ways and fashions to take communion. I was in, I think it was San Antonio, with thousands of preachers, because you know it was a good time if there are thousands of preachers around. And we had communion. And the person at the podium said, the, the wine is alcohol-free and the wafers are gluten-free, so everyone can partake. Little rice crackers and white grape juice. Not the best. But we had it together. All different kinds of ways to take communion from the table. But here's the thing. It never has mattered the way. What has always mattered was the who. Who was taking it with me from that table? Now, I don't know about you, but every time we take it in this church, I, I love it. I love that we, and I love the way it tastes, obviously, but I love the way that we take it together. But I don't know about you, but it always runs through my mind. Every time I lift the bread to my lips, I know someone somewhere else is doing the same thing. Someone in a little clay room somewhere in some country whose name I can't pronounce and couldn't find on a map, is taking the Lord's Supper. Someone in a high, extended cathedral, after words pronounced that have been pronounced for centuries, they're taking communion the same time I am. It might not be the same. Somewhere in some Orthodox church, some priest, some deacon is taking a small golden spear-like knife and cutting out little indentations in the bread, representing the body of Jesus, representing his represent, little prayers for all the people. But still, the same time I take the bread, someone somewhere is taking it too. Nothing... Church, hear me, nothing we do unites the body of Christ as much as being served from the Lord's table. And here in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, we find out that even that can be spoiled a little bit. You see, these first Christians at Corinth were coming together, and their way of taking the Lord's Supper looked a bit different. I think we ought to adopt it quite honestly. They called it the agape feast. What would happen is people would come over and you'd have your own dinner. You'd bring your own supper. Everybody would sit together, catch up, have a little fellowship, and eat. But when it was all over, they would have the agape meal. And that was when you came together, not for just a little bit of bread, not for just a little cup of juice, but for wine and for bread and for conversation, for prayer and fellowship. But what was happening at Corinth was, well, you know, some folks ain't got nothing to do all day. And so they came to a house at Corinth. They, they sat in the nice room with all the couches. And the triclinium is the word in Greek. They all came, they sat down, and they ate up all the food, ate up all the bread, drank up all the wine, waiting for the whistle to blow at 5 o'clock when the working folks would come. And they'd show up, and where's the bread? Where's the wine? Where's our part of the agape meal? Oh, I'm sorry. You know the old saying. It's written in second hesitations. Thou snoozeth, thou loseth. <laughs> it's there. It's what happened. And Paul says, am I, am I supposed to be proud of you for this? Am I supposed to be proud of you for creating division over this? Now, Paul says it in a way we can't, re we can't repeat in church, but... To a point, he says, no, no. You're, I received, I gave to you the same thing I received from Jesus. That what is happening here is the meeting of the body and blood of Christ. 
Whether like our Catholic, Episcopal, Lutheran, and other friends who believe that when this happens, the actual presence of Jesus comes in the body of the bread and the blood of Christ, or whether we as Baptists in our, our Zwinglian heritage believe that, well, these are actually just powerful representations of the covenant that Christ makes with us. Paul says, in a sense, it doesn't matter. What matters is when you come together, you come together to the Lord's table. That's what it's about. And that's why we celebrate it as a church. And why we do it more often sometimes than folks are comfortable with. And it's why we recognize today, World Communion Sunday. A day when I think it's important for us to think a little bit bigger than ourselves. A little bit bigger than our own corner of the world. To remember that Christ's body is in places we never expect. To remember that Christ's body gathers and looks a whole lot different than we'd ever imagine. That Christ's body gathers with people in places we would never go and we would never want to be. But Christ's body is there. And this morning, as you take the bread and you dip it in the cup, remember somebody somewhere is doing it just the same. Somebody somewhere, somebody somewhere unlike you, different from you, but still called a child of God, is taking from the Lord's table to be united as one with Christ. That's what we come to do today. It's why the table is prepared it's why, as you look on the table, you see all these trinkets from all over the world to remember that there are people just like us right now taking bread and wine. And there are people so different from us we would never even cross paths with them who are doing the same thing, taking the bread and taking the cup. May we rejoice in that, that Christ's body is bigger than we may ever realize. And as we come now, the table of bread has now been made ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all who love Him. It is the table of sharing with the poor of this world with whom Christ identified Himself. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come, Come to this table, all of you. Come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. Come to this table, you who have been here often and you who haven't been here near enough. Come to this table for you who have tried to follow Jesus and have succeeded and you who have tried to follow Christ and have failed. Come, for it is Christ himself who calls us to be served from this table. So come, it is Jesus who invites us to meet him here. Would you pray with me? <clears throat> Loving God, through your goodness, we have this bread and cup to offer, which has come forth from the earth and human hands have made. May we know your presence in the sharing so that we may know your touch and presence in all things. We celebrate together the life that Jesus has shared among his church through the centuries and shares even with us now. Made one in Christ and one with each other, we offer these gifts, this bread and this cup, and with them ourselves, a single living act of praise. In Christ's name, amen. <clears throat> On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread. And when he had broke it, he said, This is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This is the blood, my blood of the new covenant, shed for many. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
At this time, our deacons will come forward that we may be served from the Lord's table. Remember, if you will come down the center aisle, take a piece of bread, dip it into the cup, and go back to your seat by way of the windows. Please stand and come and be served from the Lord's table.